Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Filter. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. Superior taste. Superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> get caught in the rain last night, Matt? No, I never left the office, Doc. I stayed home, too. Yeah? For once. Ordinarily, bad weather brings a rash of broken legs and babies with it. All out in the country somewhere. Huh? Uh, you always told me living in the open is good for a man, Doc. I said sun is good for a man. Well, you'll get some sun next summer. And you'll complain just as hard about that. When I think I could have an office back in Baltimore. When nice, clean people come to see me. Yeah, but nobody needs you in Baltimore, Doc. They get sick there, too, don't they? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I've never been there. You've never been? He's never been there. Hello, John. You wouldn't last two days in Baltimore, Matt. No. No. People are too polite and well-mannered. Well, you teach me what it's like, Doc, but uh, some other time. Ah, there, now, you see what I mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, and Chester here. He could use a little refining, too. Well, now, he'll get carried away, Doc. Good morning, Mr. John. Oh, Doc. Good morning, Chester. Now, what are you doing out here, Chester? Oh, I got up early this morning. All right, so you could sit on the porch here and watch the street like an old man. I already swamped out the office, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, for the first time in two weeks. Maybe you ought to get up early every morning. Mm-mm. I've got too civilized for that. Huh. Ooh, he's got too civilized. Wait a minute. You didn't get up at all this morning. You were still up. Yes, sir. How much did you lose? Oh, I wasn't gambling. I was sitting talking to a little old gal I met, just kindly keeping her out of the rain. Oh. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a guy. We know, don't we? Oh, yes, yes. And it sure rained a barrel last night, too, didn't it, Chester? Yeah, it sure did, Doc. <laughs> uh, who's this? Some kid i never seen him before, Mr. Jones. You people tell me where I can uh, find the marshal? You done found him. Huh? Not me, General Grant. Him. Oh. <laughs> What's the trouble, son? My name's Gildon. Andy Gildon. Just come up from Texas with a herd. Oh, what's on your mind, honey? There's a man been shot, Marshal. An unarmed man. What? Up the river a ways, where we're holding the cattle. The trail boss shot him this morning before it got light. We put a guard on the boss. Well, what's the name of this outfit? They're Star M cattle, Marshal. Star M? Then Harley Burke's the trail boss. He won't be for long. Not after this. Now, Burke's a man of temper, and he's pretty rough, but he's decent. Hard to believe he'd shoot an unarmed man. Well, he did, Marshal. Is the man dead, son? He's unconscious. Has been right along. All right, let's get going, Doc. <laughs> Where is the man? 
man, Andy. He's over yonder, behind that bush. Well, there's a lot of bush around this camp. Suppose you show me. All right. Now, I'm going to talk to Burke, Doc. You let me know what you find, huh? I will, man. Hey, you the marshal? Yeah, that's right. Just look at the guard they got around Burke there, Mr. Jones. Uh-huh. I set the man to hold him, marshal. He ain't going to get away. Now, who are you? I'm Roman, Jack Roman. You help run this outfit? No, I'm just riding. Well, someone had to take over. All right, Roman, you can tell those men to fall back now. All right. Stand back now, you men in the laws here. Stand back. Marshal. They told me you shot a man. Oh, he shot him all right, Marshal. And Hodges wasn't even on. I wasn't asking you, Roman. You gotta hear the truth. Burke here had done nothing but fight with Hodges the whole trip. On his neck about something every minute. Go on, you gotta admit it, Burke. I had no use for him. You hated him. He was lazy and no good. Of course I hated him. Burke, I've known you a good many years. You've been coming up a trail a long time. That's right, Marshal. And you're as rough a trail boss as there is. You're rock-headed and you drive the men as hard as you do yourself. And I've seen you be downright mean about it. Could be. But I sure never figured you'd shoot a man. Yeah. Surprised me too, Marshal. All right, tell me what happened. Well, it was raining. I'd been out with a guard. Only dry spot I could find when I come in was way over there by Hodges. I went to sleep, and then he must have woke up and seen who it was. Then he come over and kicked me in the head. Hurt me bad, but somehow I got a bullet in him before I blacked out. You didn't know he was unarmed. What difference it make, Marshal? Make a lot of difference if he doesn't live. Doc here will know about that. No. Hello, Burke. Doc. Well, Doc, how is he? He's dead. Burke. I know. I know. I'll get my stuff together and come with you, Marshal. Who's going to boss this outfit now? Oh, uh, Andy Gillen. Andy? Well, he's just a kid. His pa owns this herd, Marshal. Oh. What do you want, Burke? Andy, your pa sent you on this drive to make a man out of you. Working for a murderer? Your boss now. Sell the herd, pay off the men, and get the rest of the money back to your pa. Can you do that? <laughs> I'll be right with you, Marshal. Fine boss he was. Hey, Roman, let's start moving them cattle down the river. All right, let's go, you men. Well, what do you think, Doc? Well, man, that man Hodges was shot in the head. And by somebody who was lying on the ground. Oh, well, Burke admits doing it. Then I guess he did it all right. Yeah, but there's something he isn't telling me, Doc. And knowing Harley Burke, I'm going to have a hard time finding out what it is. down to jail all right this morning? Yeah, he's in jail. If ever I seen a man earn the hanging, he's it. Oh? Uh-huh. I take it you don't like him, Roman. We got along just fine, Marshal. He ain't seen Andy Gilden, have you? Now he's been sitting over there with Kitty. Where? Uh, now there he goes out the door. Looks like he's pretty drunk, too. He is drunk. Been hunting everywhere. Uh, here you are, Marshal. Oh, thanks, Sam. Uh, I think I'll take that beer over to the table with me. 
Uh, Hello, Kitty. You sure take your time, Matt. No. What's wrong? You saw me sitting here with that drunken kid. Why didn't you come over? Well, Andy Gilden may be a kid, but his pa owns the Star M. And Andy's now boss of the outfit. Hmm. I heard all about his pa. Yeah, he must be a rich man. Andy wasn't talking about his money. Oh? He hates him, Matt. I never heard anything like it. Oh, why? The old man's too strict, probably. Like sending him up the trail just to make a man out of him. Yeah. Now that hasn't hurt him, Kitty. Matt, I think that boy'd kill his pa if he had a chance. All he talked about was how he'd like to get back at him. What are you staring at me for? What? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Kitty. I, uh, I was just thinking. Thinking about what? I'm glad I talked to you, Kitty. Maybe now I can find out what Harley Burke's holding back from me. I sure don't understand you, Marshal. Oh, why not, Burke? Come in this morning, turn me out of jail. Now you're taking me down to the stock pins. What for? Well, I thought you'd like to know how young Gilden made out with the sale of those cattle. I think you're lying. Now, oh, there he is with that fellow Ruman again. They seem to be pretty good friends, don't they? I guess. You just won't tell me anything, will you, Burke? I'll tell you anything you want to know, Marshal. Oh, yeah, sure. Good uh, morning, Andy. Yeah. Ruman. What's Harley Burke doing out of jail? That man gets cramped in there. I was walking him around a little. Well, I ain't gonna be seen with no murder. Andy, I'll be in my room at the Dodge house should you want me. Okay. How'd you sell a herd, Andy? I sold it. You get a good price? It's no business of yours, Burke. Not no more. Now we can always find out from the agent, Andy. All right. I got twenty thousand dollars payable tomorrow. Twenty thousand's a fair price. Your Paul will be pleased. I'll let you take it to Mr. Bodkin at the bank tomorrow, Andy. He'll give you a note for it. I don't need no bank. And I don't need no advice either, Marshal. Now look, Andy, you can't carry that money home in cash. Why not? Nobody does. There's too many jayhawkers and bushwhackers waiting along the trail. Now, you know that. I don't know nothing. Except you can leave me alone. Both of you. We're only trying to help, Andy. I'll do my job, and you do yours, Marshal. You go hang Harley Burke. Well, Burke? Well, the boy's kind of headstrong, Marshal. That's all you've got to tell me, huh? That's all. All right, then let's get back to jail. taking my gun for? For Chester to hold on you while he's walking you to jail. Jail? Well, you're talking crazy, Marshal. Keep your voice down. Now, here's his gun, Chester. And you put him in a far cell. And you keep him quiet, huh? Real 
real quiet. I understand. Come on, get me. Oh, oh, ow! Now, look here. You don't shut up, I'll lump up your head with this gun. You can't arrest me. I ain't done nothing. Get moving. You can't do this. Of course I can't. to talk to you, Roman. Sure. Good morning. Roman, have you seen Andy Gilden in the last half hour? <laughs> oh, sure. You was there at the stock pen. Why? Well, a few minutes ago, he was seen leaving town, riding north. So? I saw him myself. He was riding awful fast, Roman. A lot of men ride out of town, Marshal. Maybe he's got a gal out the country somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Well, what you think? I was with the agent who bought the Star M herd. Yeah. He got the $20,000 up today, and he didn't have to wait till tomorrow. Say he was headed north? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Texas is south of here. Stealing that money. Stealing it from his own paw. Looks that way. Well, ain't you going after him, Marshal? Well, he's a gildan. I kind of look on it as a family matter, Roman. Uh -huh. And I'm going after him. No, you're not. You go after him, there'll be a fight. Maybe a killing. We'll let his paw worry I'm about I'm going it. after him, Marshal. You can't stop me. Can't I, Roman? Yeah, Marshal. You got Burke back in jail? Yeah. Well, I got something to say. And I want him to hear it, too. The cells are out back, Roman, through that door there. Oh. got something he wants both of us to hear. Rumen, huh? Well, I've been waiting long enough. What do you mean? It was you who kicked me in the head and shot Hodges. You know what you're going to say? It was not me doing it. Of course it was. Now, don't be a fool, Burke. What'd I get out of it? I don't hate old man Gilden. I don't want to steal his money. Nobody stole his money. You mean you ain't heard? Heard what? Andy got paid off for them cattle today, and he rode out of town headed north. <laughs> he did, huh? And what's more, he told me he killed Hodges. He's lying, he... and I controlled him. They tricked us. Andy, they tricked us. They got us crossing each other. Roman killed him, and I controlled him. Oh, I kill you for that. Roman. Chester. Yes, sir. He, he got him all right. Got him right in the head. He's dead. Yeah. Would you let him do that for Marshal? Well, he wouldn't have talked if I'd have disarmed him, Burke. I had to take a chance. Mm. Yeah, I guess you did. Maybe if you'd have talked, none of this would have happened. Well, I knew I didn't shoot that man, Marshal. But I knew the only way I'd ever find out who did was to just wait and see what they was after. Well, you knew they were in it together down at the stock pens. You knew they were going to keep the money. Yeah, but I didn't know which one was the killer. Well, it doesn't matter much now. Andy's dead and Roman will hang anyway. But why were you protecting the two of them? Why did you take them? Because I was afraid it might have been the kid that done it. Old man Gilden's the best friend I got in this world. I couldn't never have faced him if I'd brought his boy up here to hang. Now. Uh, I understand the boy hated him. But he didn't hate Andy, Marshal. 
All he wanted was for him to be a man. Well, something went wrong with that. Sure did. Burke. Yeah? You did all you could. When the old man hears the whole story, he... You'll know what a good friend you've been. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNair is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. <laughs>